Hi folks, thanks for joining me again. I'm Stephen Cronin. Now today I've had a go at, um, I suppose it's like a, like a sort of generic Yorkshire Moors type of scene, really. Um, I did this one a little bit different. I don't, I don't often use this like little flat brush, but it, it came in very useful today, just to get all these little tonal differences and all these little details. And I sort of really focused on the lights and the darks on this one, these bands are in, in shadow. So let me show the colours I've used for this one. So on the palettes I've used Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Alizarin Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. So it was pretty much, so it was everything except the, the Payne's Grey. Um, the brushes, I think I used that little zero rigger there. Um, I use a number three rigger. Put the started off with a big A brush and then used the, the small flat for a lot of uh, the sort of fine tuning thereafter. Right, so I'm going to kick this off with some clean water and then we'll see now. These are in crimson. Just get a bit of that into the sky. Bit of crimson ultramarine. Bit of light red in there as well. Let's just bring this down somewhere by the horizon line. What I'm going to do is use a tissue just to soften the horizon line, not too much. Add a bit of texture as well to the sky. Just whack that in. Next, let's add that horizon. I'm just going to mix a bit of everything, everything together. Too much water on there. Put all the sky colours together and then. Going to start up there, something like that. Put it all to me, then I'm just going to whiz. Try and get it varied a little bit. I might darken that actually later. And there's a little that's a lake right there in the distance, but I don't wanna I don't wanna paint over that little bit. Something like that. Using little dibs and dabs and things just to suggest things that are just growing there on the hillside. And just cleaning the brush when again, I want to get back to a lighter colour. So back to this raw sienna, down to this end of the valley. Right, I'm going to 
to go. Coming down on this side now. Just quickly get back to a lighter colour. I'm going to bring that sort of diagonally across. I'll come back in a bit and put all the hedges in and things. get this flat against the pie pack so there's a one or two little buildings I want to scrape in while I'm going along so I'm just going to re-clip it first I've got my piece of card down there ready to go when I'm ready I'm going to pop this foreground in a bit of sh shadow Do a hint of a few little areas. We've got one about there, and uh, this one slightly closer. Come back down a bit, and then just. It's a little bit wet actually for this scrape, but I'm just about to get away with it. It's a bigger one there in front of that. I'll come, I'll come back to them. But for now, what I'm going to do, <coughs> just put the hake to one side. I'm just going to try and add a little bit of detail with this little brush. What I'm doing, I'm just going red and blue. I'm going to try and put that the distant land there in shadow. I'm giving up there like that. Add this as a sort of shadow area. That's giving across there. to do sometimes you know, mixing them together just get your finger in there and just start mixing them up just blending them together a little bit so just below there just take a little bit of raw sienna the water's edge. A few 
the little trees at the water's edge. I'm just going to pop them in like that. Just push the push it up like that. It's just a few trees. A few more along there. Just use the corner of the brush to get some random marks. that up there. Now coming forward you've got another tree line this time. We'll sort of like that. Mess the bottom up like that. Just scuff it up. trees going up here. Now if they're too strong, just like that, so just catch the bottom of them like that. Well if they're too tall rather I meant to say, just catch the bottom, see how they get, they just go instantly smaller because you're just wiping the base away. So you want another one going up there like whack it in, just whack it in. You want to make it smaller just pull the bottom away like that. Shadow. So I'm just giving us these darks, these dark ones, dark colours. What I meant to say. So I'm just bashing them in like that. They're ultramarine. Paint over a lot of this. These are just just random details in front of these houses, but a lot of this will be painted over. Obviously, if there's anything that I really like and catches me eye, I'll, uh, I'll keep it. But I'm going with a bit of whack a bit of paint in there with a rigger brush. Now we can use this rigger brush, just put the height down there. Actually, first of all, just need to make sure it's flat. Just get it flat. some dividers. Two bits of land that need breaking up.
got a few fence posts along there. I think they're too big, though, aren't they? A bit more land and details scattered about. So that's coming across there and down there and across there. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. What a mess I made of that one. I'll come back to that in a minute. I'll show you how to repair that. It's not the end of the world. Well, a few darks in there. Darken those trees and things. On some darker trees there. I want to add these roofs a different colour, I think. I'm not, not keen on this colour. Um, what's that look like? And then when you've got all dark, you can, you can always scuff, take some of that dark out. Lighten it just to sort of break it up a little bit. A few little lighter there it is. Imagine like the, the lights coming in from, from somewhere, not sure where, but just, just breaks it up a little bit. I just want to put a few more darks in, I think, just to... So, I mean, I've got this in nice and dark, so that's... Side, I think. Um, just match that a little bit. Um, I'm just thinking like a dark, something dark running across there. Like a big shadow or something. Sienna. Nice. Uh, let's make it lemon yellow.
at the rig and brush, it's just define this little bit, this area a bit better. So it's like a, a hedge or something that's, that's going across there. I think I want <coughs> this building a little bit more distinctive. I'm thinking it's paint and red. And that one. darker Just keep pausing it just and stand back just to try to get an overall feel for it. I think, see, I think these can act as the focal point um, to the whole scene. I was going to put some figures in but I, I, I don't think that fit in very well. So I might just, just stop at that point I think. Um, I was going to take that off, would I? Um, hang on, let's just do some birds first. Three little birds there. Um, I need to find a clean bit of tissue. As you can see, it's um, a bit messy. with a clean brush. Actually it's um, I think it's the dirty tissue that's it's causing the uh, That'll do. I'm going to stop at that point before I mess it up anymore. Let's just pop a... Pop my name down here. I'm just checking it's dry. I'm still not sure if it's dry, but I'm just going to whack my name down there and call that one done. So let's stick a mount on that see what it looks like. So here's our finished painting the mount. So if you're going to have a closer look at it, First thing to say, what I really wanted to do was get these really stri strong, dark, shadowy toned areas to contrast against the light coming from the sky. You can see there's like there's three distinct layers. So you got basically, as well as the bright light, you've then got this horizon line silhouetted in shadow. Then you've got another bank on this right hand side 
as well as the individual tree lines and bushes and whatnot that scatter the back. And then you've got this dominant dark here in the foreground as well, which where I've put these um, little buildings as well, and all these little random details, just scrapings with the card. That could be anything. Could have put a bit of that red, maybe scattered that about as well, and maybe a few other colours, but that, that's for another day. You can see where I've used the rigger as well, just to divide the land up and add a few random marks and, and details. Um, none of which by themselves look a fat lot, but you put them all together and they start to look like something. You see all the bit variation in colour. I think a lot of it helps just using that little flat brush so I can quickly get a bit of colour on it, whack it in, quickly wash it, put another colour on, and then get all these little variations. And lights and darks. I think another important thing, don't be afraid to sort of get your fingers in there and get your hands messy. It's all part of the process. So I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support to uh, patrons over at patreon.com slash Stephen Croning. Do join me over there if you get the opportunity. Um, post your own paintings on the community page as well. So Keep practicing. If you've got any questions, please ask, and I'll see you again soon.